Dr. Mark Redding answers your questions about clotting. How does blood clot and what causes clotting? What are the risks for DVT and PE and how can you prevent blood clots? What are the signs and symptoms of DVT and PE? What action should you take when they happen? What is the best treatment for blood clots? In short, everything you ever want and need to know about clotting. The title of the talk here, I hope, will not turn into more than everything you ever want to know about blood clotting. Um, the, this is a, a testament to the courage of the people that I'm fortunate enough to work with. Um, you know, with that kind of a topic, I could talk till Monday. Um, but I'll try to keep it to about 40 or 45 minutes. My, my hope is that we can just sort of run through all the different things that sort of, in, in, in summary, kind of put together this whole area of the problem that we've been talking about, which is, which is thrombosis. And we'll talk a little bit about both arterial and venous thrombosis. What I'd like to do is just sort of go through the nuts and bolts of it with you. Some of this is stuff you guys already know. Some of it might be new information. Some of it might be re-information or clarifying information. Uh, but I want to just kind of summarize for everybody how we think about this problem, both from a medical standpoint and, and touch on some of the more public health uh, aspects of it as well. So um, that's where we're going. Please feel free to stop and shout out a question, throw a piece of fruit, whatever you need to do to get my attention. Um, before we get started, I just want to go through some definitions. You know, we talk about a lot of these words, and, and uh, I think sometimes we forget that some of our terminology can be confusing. And so just to be sure we're all on the same page, um, we want to go through some of these definitions. So hemostasis is, is normal blood clotting. We'll talk a little bit about how that works. Um, when blood clots excessively, we call that thrombosis. And the term thrombophilia is derived from that, and it just basically means a predisposition to thrombosis or predisposition to excess clotting. So thrombophilia is a very broad term, represents many different genetic factors, environment, environmental factors, all together increasing one's tendency to form blood clots inappropriately. We've all been familiar with the terms DVT and PE, but just to be sure, so deep vein thrombosis, DVT, a clot in the leg. We'll talk about different types of leg clots to make sure that we understand what we really mean when we say DVT. Uh, PE or pulmonary embolus, pulmonary embolism is a clot that usually breaks loose from a vein in the leg and travels to the lung, sometimes silently, sometimes very dramatically resulting in sudden death and everything in between. And then we use the term VTE or venous thromboembolism to kind of encompass all of that together. So when we're talking about DVTs and PEs, it's a, it's a collective thing and, and the term VTE is used. So you'll hear these two terms throughout the talks today um, and, and I just want to be sure we're all familiar with them. So what are we going to talk about? I want to start with how does blood clot and that's terrifying to a lot of people. Certainly all the medical students would be running out of the room by now. Um, so thank you for staying. Um, so just kind of go through the basics of how we understand how blood clots, and really, you know, this is a, a work in progress. I think back to what I learned in medical school 20 years ago, um, it's very, very different, and, and we're not even close to really totally understanding how this works yet. So a lot of the research that's been done over the years to help understand how this works normally has led to tremendous insights in terms of when it doesn't work normally. And so I just want to go through that and kind of highlight some of the things that we know and, and maybe point out some areas that uh, we're interested in investigating further. Um, I do want to spend a few minutes just talking about the difference between arterial and venous clots. I think this is a common area of, of misunderstanding and misconception, and so I we'll want to try to clarify some of that. We will talk about genetic thrombophilia, so genetic tendency to clotting. And then I really want to spend a fair bit of time talking about prevention uh, and diagnosis of venous thrombosis, and then at the very end talk about some of our treatment approaches to this. So we're going to kind of cover the whole spectrum of things, and hopefully it won't be too painful for you. <laughs> 